Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. It's another indie review here in the Indie Rundown podcast. I'm Mike. That Zach's over there as well, and we're here to review Mike Kravinsky's feature-length film, Nothing to Do, starring Paul Ferenkopf, Philip Lawton, and Connie Bauman, written and directed by Mike Kravinsky. This is his fourth film and his third full-length feature film as a writer-director. As everyone knows, Mike Kravinsky, his first feature film was a next Nick. Uh, and then he went on to do, in 2013, then in 2015, Geographically Desirable, which is available on Amazon if anyone wants to check it out. Okay, Geographically Desirable. Uh, mm-hmm. Quick synopsis of that film. We're going to double plug uh, Kravinsky here. Quick, quick synopsis of Geographically Desirable. A driven, overworked, and sleep-deprived TV newswoman's life is derailed when she inherits a house and a dog in a small, quirky town starring Blair Bowers, Andrew Agner Nichols, Nick Dettori, and uh, and yeah, it looks very interesting. Again, it's that's on Amazon as well. Definitely want to check that out. And we're here to talk about nothing to do. Okay, so nothing to do is a be- it, 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 it's a beautiful drama slash comedy about uh, you know a a. a a man, a middle-aged man who has to take care of his father in hospice care. I'll give you a quick um, synopsis of the film. Uh, what happens, according to IMDb, what happens when you can't stand the way your sibling does just about anything, but you're forced to be with them during your father's last days on Earth? Pretty much um, encapsulates the, the, the feel of the film right there. And um, uh, again, I thought Paul and Connie did a great job playing off each other as um you know brother and sister and the the thing that i like about uh mike Ravinsky and that we we discussed as well uh you know during his episode on the podcast is that he enjoys the uh, i don't know if it, the, the human element uh, i don't know how I, I may be sounding uh pretentious uh here but ex- excuse my pretension but yeah, that human element that uh, people, the, the, these not necessarily smaller scale movies, but these uh, lesser told stories are um, they're 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 semi autobiographical, autobiographical from him, and uh, that's what I like, and that's why they're they're unique. Uh, that's what I'm going for. His his stories are unique. Obviously, uh, Mike, you know, he spent uh, over 29 years as a um, uh, a, a, as an editor in for ABC News in, in, in the DC area, so obviously geographically desirable, you know that uh, newswoman element, the per- person working in the news, he brought that element to that story, um, and in this story, nothing to do, you know it. it he had to he 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 recalled uh, he drew from his own personal experience you know, with his father. Obviously, you'll learn this from my, our podcast episode. Uh, it's not just me. <laughs> it's, it may sound like I'm pulling facts out of thin air, but these are the stuffs I learned through my conversation with him in highlighting that film, nothing to do, but it was very personal to him. A, a, a lot of these situations, a lot of storylines, but what I like about what Mike did with this film is yes, it's very personal. Yes, it is a dark subject matter. If anyone had to have ever had to have ever, if anyone was in the unfortunate situation where they were forced to see a loved one in their waning stages of their life Mm -hmm. uh, or anyone in terminal care you there's a there's a universe there are universal truths there uh and universal experiences to a certain degree uh where you know it's 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 definitely not a fun time it's definitely not a an enjoyable experience when you when you, ultimately but there is you know uh, mike pulls the humor out of these real life situations very well and which makes it watchable and when you're watching nothing to do uh at the end of the film you don't feel like you've seen a uh, heavy drama even though the subject matter itself you know taking care of your father during his last days in, in hospice care it seems very dark and daunting but there was a lot of humor here. There was a lot of uh, 
nice moments too, you know, between, um, you know, the father and son, just in terms of the, the, the vulnerability that they had that definitely seemed new in their relationship. And, uh, you know, it, it, it explores that angle, that father son angle, um, a lot. It really dives into it. And, um, even with the siblings, uh, you know, the way, again, like I mentioned before, with the way between Connie and, and Paul play across from each other. But the main thing is, uh, the, he found the humor in these situations and the humor didn't detract from the truth of, uh, of the story, which, uh, you know, that yin and yang, I, I thought is, uh, you know, Mike was able to do beautifully throughout and really made me enjoy the watching his feature film, nothing to do. And, uh, I definitely would recommend it to, you know, to our audiences and to anyone who, uh, you know, wants to watch, uh, a, mm -hmm. a real story. Yep. And I, I really love it when, when uh, directors and writers are able to tell stories like these without, you know, making us feel like we just got punched in the stomach at the end. You know, I think it's, you got to make it enjoyable and you got to bring a little bit of the humor, uh, without detracting from, again, the truth of the story. And I thought Mike did that beautifully. Yeah. I love passion projects, man. You can tell there was a lot of passion put into this and, uh, I wasn't expecting as much comedy as it was, but it worked. It worked. It didn't didn't ruin the movie for me, man. I really loved the message that it sent. And you, you hit the nail on the head earlier when it's uh, something that people can relate to. And you kind of hope you never find yourself in the situation because, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those movies where you don't well, – not everybody. I can't speak for everybody, but you, you just – kind of don't want to face it because it's it's the it's the hard truth of man this this, this could happen to me one day you know so it's uh it's kind of like a raw a raw feeling for me at least but um yeah man i thought it was a very well put together film and i really hate that i had to miss our interview with mike but um i, I got to listen back to the episode and just to hear him talk about it and all the stuff that went into it it really kind of helped me understand man how much uh how much personal stuff you put into this and like i said i thought it came out beautifully yeah, yeah. Well, I think we are both in 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 accordance and in agreement with nothing to do. We liked it. And again, we want to thank Mike Kravinsky again for it, the conversation we were able to have with him on the show. A uh, lot of insight, and uh, you know, I'm a fan of, fan of him as a filmmaker. And I will be checking out um, geographically desirable as well, and we'll be making yeah. Yeah. Um, be making a a indie review of that film as well. So uh, you guys can most likely get the recommendation. I kind of like those movies of people going back home. It, it's, it's some people may been done a lot, but I, I think I just like it because you get to see someone go back and, and just their interactions with everyone else. I love how that tells a story of who they were and then the distance between who they were and who they are now. For some reason, that's interest that always interests me. Mm -hmm. So. I definitely, I definitely want to check that out again. Mike Kravinsky, he's got a. This guy makes makes his films are all over. They're they're on Amazon, all of them. So he's, I'm looking forward to the next one. We're fans. We're Kravinsky fans, and we think you will be too. If you're especially if you're a fan of independent films of the Ed Burns variety, or uh, or the Duplass Brothers variety, you know he. Uh, I think in 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 very much. In very much the the, the, the way that the Duplass brothers uh, espouse that you're supposed to have, find your voice as a filmmaker, and then that is going to, instead of it trying to imitate and make the next this, the next that, find your voice, embrace it, use it, and, and make a film out of it. I think uh, Mike definitely has been able to do that, just given watching Nothing to Do and the conversation I had with him as well, so I'm just going to be... You know, I'm a fan of nothing to do, so I, I think I'm going to be a fan of Geographically Desirable as well. Uh, spoiler alert. So we're going to definitely – I'm going to definitely check that out. I look forward to checking that out. And we think you should too. Again, follow us at The Indie Rundown on Twitter and Instagram. Like our Facebook page, The Indie Rundown Podcast. It's Mike and Zach. Nothing to do. Available on Amazon right now. Check it out. Be sure to follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at The Indie Rundown. And like our Facebook page, The Indie Rundown Podcast.